Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Sierra's um, Mastermind Series. We are so, so pr privileged today to uh, to welcome Ricky and uh, Cody K. Kane of the um, Kane Realty Group out of Austin, Texas. Um, so I just wanted to put a little, little teaser out here. You guys are going to want to stick around to the end of the presentation where you're going to have an ability to sign up for their newsletter. It's a, um, it's called their insider newsletter, CRG. It's specifically for agents and some great act, some great information on how to succeed in today's market. Um, but with that, I, I just want to turn it over, uh, to, to Ricky and to Cody K. Um, I think you guys are going to be in for a treat today as they walk through how they run their systems and processes. And no, oh, by the way, my bad, Ricky, he is the director of growth. And Cody K is the director of sales. So they have their roles very cleanly defined for their team. So guys, um, welcome and uh, take it away. Amazing. So I'm saying my name's a mouthful, right? Well, especially at the end of the cane, the cane part. So I just want to make sure I got the, the full amount in there. So yes, but uh, okay. it's a beautiful name. I love your name. It is perfectly all right. Okay. And honey, just so I know, since you're the technology guru, they can see your whole screen, babe. Like, I don't know what you're doing, but it's all just on there. Um, that Sandals Resort, is that in the Bahamas? Is that where we're taking oh. this from today? That yeah, is. that's not. Yeah, hold on. That was that was actually the view outside of your guys' window. So that's it. Yeah. Thank God that's not okay. some weird, weird picture, honey. Uh, and then on here, just so I know, where I don't see everybody. That's what's supposed to be occurring here. <laughs> I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah. You just see us. And this and this is like a presenter's yeah. mode. So you just see us. Um, we have folks in there. So if you want to, we can ask them to tell them where they're tuning in from in the chat box. And you guys can pull the chat box up and you can see. It's perfectly fine. I'm used to seeing people. I mean, I'll look at my husband all day long. That works for me. <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get kicked off. Well, um, like Scott said, um, Ricky and Cody K. Kane here in Austin, Texas, um, started in the business in 2006, and we're blessed to start our team in 2010. And so um, in some aspects, it feels like we've been doing it just for a few years. And then in some aspects, it feels like we've been doing it for about 50 years. <laughs> just depends on the day and, and how that day went. Right, Cody K.? That is true, 100%. Yeah. And so for us, the reason why we're passionate about this topic is because we started with nothing. We had about $1,000 in our bank account. Um, the first few years were not a success. We um, ate top ramen, slept on the floor. Um, it uh, wasn't your wasn't the best time to get into real estate. Our first full year in real estate was 2007. I uh, don't know how many people here were in real estate in 2007, but it might not have been the best time to get into real estate. Um, and so the reason why this is so passionate for us is because the experience that we had, we wanted to have a culture and a team where people could come in and get into production right away and have a great time while doing it and live their best life because we were not able to do that the first few years. So that's where it kind of came about. It started organically, but um, that's why we're so, so passionate about it now. And Cody K, you want to read what Mr. Napoleon said? Well, you don't let me read these quotes. You're such a kind, kind man here. Uh, it is literally true that you can succeed best and quickest by helping others succeed. Ricky and I talk about this a lot. <laughs> I mean, there's only so far that we could grow the company with the two of us and, and live our life by design in the process. So... He's got some great quotes sprinkled in through here for y'all's viewing pleasure. You go and click yes. on that. Yep. There so we go. Who are, there we are. There we go. That's us. Yeah. So who are we? Well, um, chemical engineering background. I don't know how many of you knew that, but we were in the chemical engineering space. This does not land as good, that joke, when you don't see anybody else. <laughs> and by that, we were bartenders. And so that's how we started. We, um, again, started in December of 2006, first few years. Uh, I got into real estate first and the whole time she was basically supporting me by helping me with open houses and everything else. But um, officially I started first and then 2009 uh, became an individual agent. 
And we were blessed to triple our first two years of production that third year, which was really cool. And then, like I had mentioned, in 2010, we started the team. 2011, we hired our first assistant and then uh, started to realize our why for being in real estate. We also were blessed to start a nonprofit called Cane Cares in 2016, which supports our past clients and their family members when they experience a severe time of need. Then we uh, formed a title company, um, and you can see some other things on there as well, but that's just a little bit about us. And then why should people build a team for those people that are on the call that haven't built a team, Miss Cody Kay? Yeah, so we got a couple different things on here. Uh, obviously, just more leads than you've got the capacity to be able to properly serve and support, uh, to give more to others, <clears throat> to be a business owner and work on the business instead of in the business, which we're still uh, dancing that beautiful dance. If I'm being very honest and vulnerable, figuring out both sides of this opportunities to others, something bigger than yourself, a legacy that can be handed down. Uh, we actually spent a lot of time with Gary talking about this pretty extensively in a mastermind last week, honey, just really figuring out what, what that part of things look like. And then a business plan that brings in more profit. I mean, you build a team because you you can only go so far alone, right? You're in a boat and Ricky and I are rowing and there's only so far and so fast that we can go when it's just the two of us. Tom Brady didn't win Super Bowls alone. So it's bringing, <laughs> yeah, I forgot you put all these things in here. Uh, it's being able to go faster and further with other people. Yes. Ricky, and Ricky why, you don't... <laughs> why do you not build a team? Yes. Well, you don't build a team to tell other people what to do or have other people do the hard work that you're not willing to do. And then you also don't want to build a team so that people just call you a team leader um, to quickly work a lot less hours. It's been my experience that I work not as many hours as the first few years, and I still work a pretty large amount of hours. It's just what I'm doing is different. I'm working more on the business instead of in the business. So I think a lot of people think they can start a team and just quickly back off and let everyone do it. I've seen very few people actually pull that off successfully. If you're going to continue to grow it. And the caveat of that would be if you just have unlimited cash supply to just hire the right people and you have the training to find those people and what that needs to look like, maybe you can do it. But if you're like me, you didn't have that budget. And so um, we get to be those people working on the business instead of in the business. Then also avoid gro growing and being uncomfortable. Go for it, honey. Yeah. And I think too, if you, if you really think about this from when you and I, like we pulled it back in the very beginning, let's start building a team. Cause I know that we were very clear that there was only so far that you and I could go together and what we could do. <clears throat> and I'm not sure that we really actually sat down and had really great conversations on exact other than the vision of, we know that we can't do this just with you and I, I don't know that we actually really sat down and said, hey, why are we doing this? What's going to be important to us? And I truly believe had we dug really deep into specifically why are we building this team right now, we probably could have expedited the hiring process a hell of a lot faster had we actually done that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had this presentation when we started. That would have been pretty nice. Um this is a subject you're pretty passionate about, Cody K, as as I am as well. We um, the why is that thing that spurs emotional intensity and just leads you to take action in life. Um, you know, I mentioned in the beginning we hamburger helper top ramen. We literally just slept on a mattress on the floor. And what's interesting, reflecting back on it in the moment, I don't think Cody K and I even really thought about it. It was just what we needed to do. It's upon reflection we think, oh my gosh, that's kind of crazy what we did. So in the beginning, the why was to ensure that my family never had to say no to something they deserve a yes to. And now that we have other people that depend on it, us, it's to ensure our CRG family members never have to say no to something they or their family deserve a yes to. And if you haven't read this book, we highly recommend it. And I do believe it's a question. And if you think about it, different uh, candidates that we're having that coming in, I ask this question a lot. Like this is actually a question when we're interviewing candidates that are coming in for the company. They ask this question quite frequently about <clears throat> your why. I have a lot of thoughts on on someone's why, not not only in regards to the pool that like causes someone to wake up, like what's your pool, your gravitational pull to continue to keep doing action, which is really what this is. But I also think it's important if you're starting to one have a team, which we've really failed at 
this whole thing multiple times. Probably me 10 years from now, will look back at me right now and go, what the heck was I doing? Uh, but getting really clear for you, whether you have a team or you're working to build one, what is your personal why? So again, you can communicate that message to candidates and people within your organization so that they continue to be attracted to why you're doing what you're doing. Ooh, I like this In one. Core, so yeah, core values. So um, I think it's important for a lot of reasons to really know what your company's core values are. And I think um, it, it's it's important for you to know so that you know what it looks like when you find people that may share them, but you need to be able to articulate them as well. And how we came to ours, we did a really cool exercise. I still remember this like it was yesterday. We took um, we split our team up. And at that time, I think we only had 10 people. So we split uh, five people into one room, five people into another room, and we gave them a deck of core value cards. These are actually the cards. Um, and we, the deck of cards was a hundred cards. We had them go, was it 50 or hundred, Cody K? Uh, it's about 68 mm -hmm. in total. Okay. Okay. There you go. So 68. Really so, precise number for you there, honey. Yes. So we had them, we told them, we gave them 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to get those core values down to 10 core values that they thought best embodied the culture of our real estate team. Then from there, we had them, um, we went back in the room and said, great, now you have five minutes to get it down to five. We brought both groups back into the room and something magical happened. Each group went up and on these pieces of paper wrote down the five core values. And do you know from that big stack of core values, four were the same on each side. And then the one that was different kind of meant the same thing. So we had a 30 second discussion on which one we were going to roll with and we were done. So we learned one, we're showing up consistently for everybody to choose these same core values as what embodies the cane royalty group culture. Um, and it just showed us we're doing something right because we're consistent if everybody's choosing the same thing. So we always recommend people do a similar exercise to one, come up with your core values, but two, man, are you being, are you showing up consistently? Because if you separate them into two or three groups, depending on your team size, and they all come back with different values, that might show you, you have some work to do in terms of how you're showing up every day. Well, and I think, too, that I shared this when we did this um, webinar at the summit, but an, another really cool thing that you can use off of these, and you can make these cards. I still have this jankety old set that we've been using for uh, forever. For anyone that's with KW, these are like the opposite end of the bold cards, if anyone remembers those. And <clears throat> when, and I forgive me, I think I have a frog or something in my throat. That's why I keep doing that. <laughs> Uh, when you're in the interview process with people, because this is one of the things that I love doing in regards to figuring out who's where people's core values are before you actually hire them on. Ricky asked a lot of really great questions. He's got an awesome, uh, I think you talk about this in just a little bit, but the questions that he asks someone throughout the initial process before we bring him in for a shadow day. But when they come in for a shadow day with the team and I will sit down and make these stack of cards. And like I said, there's a big chunk of them. I don't know if you guys can see this. And um, I will use it as a test. I do ask people, do you want to play a game? We're going to play an easy way or the hard way, because it's interesting to me, the people that choose the easy game versus the hard game. But I'll go through and I'll ask them within under a minute to flip through these cards and lay out the 10 cards that speak to them in the best way. Like, what cards speak to you the most? Give me 10. One, I'm doing it because I'm curious to see, can, this per can I have someone in front of me that can actually take 68 cards and narrow them down to 10 in one minute? I typically find if someone can't do that, I probably would just, what word did I say last time you told me not to say train? <laughs> I won't say that one, but I probably wouldn't be a really effective leader because I would be moving far too quickly and intensely for someone. So it gives me some feedback on that. Then out of those 10, I tell them, hey, you've got 30 seconds to narrow it down to five. And the goal behind that is that I've got at least three of the five that match up with our company's core values. And if they don't, it might be something that's not worth us moving forward in the process with people. It's a really cool exercise. And then you get to just have some great conversation and ask them some really um, deep questions about these different words. Because we could take everyone that's on this group right now and take the word growth, and that probably would mean 150 different things to 150 different people. 
So that's one way that you can do this. People's values shape how they see and perceive the world. And you've really got to understand how people see it in order to properly lead them. And so this is a really cool exercise to do. It's also important to get clear on your value proposition. So these are the actual slides. And again, at the end of the um, presentation, there'll be an email there. If there's anything that you want hard copies of or, or digital copies of, or you want to go deeper on, just um, ask us by sending an email to that email address. But these are the actual slides that we go over uh, as part of what we call our pre-boarding conversation, which is what we go over right before we actually hire them. It's part of our process. And so on here, you can see all the different things that we provide and we attach a value to it. And you can see the total of value to someone coming on as a buyer's agent that we can actually put a number to is just under $80,000. Uh, and that doesn't include things like group health insurance and all the other things you can see there that say invaluable. So make sure you know what it is that you're providing and be able to articulate what that value looks like when you're sitting down with a candidate. And now it's really cool to go back on one. <clears throat> so also on this one, you know, it's really important for us. Like, of course, a lot of times you'll get the question, what are your splits? As long as that's not the first question someone's asking, I really am turned off when that's the first question that comes out of people's mouths. But there's also a lot of agents that just don't know what they don't know. And they think that that's the question that you should be asking. This really helps to lay a path for a value exchange conversation because that's what a split is at its core. It's an exchange of value. You're giving something up and the company is giving something to you. The goal is that it's a constant symbiotic value exchange, but this really helps drive the conversation where it's not so much about how much of my commission am I giving away as where it should be, hey, I'm contributing this back. What's the value that I'm getting for the company for that? And this really helps navigate that conversation. So questions to ask yourself, um, are you ready to place an intentional focus on personal growth? Do you have the lead volume to support a team? Uh, it's my opinion that the most powerful teams control the lead. And that's a main value proposition for the agent. Do I have plug and play systems that are well-documented? Do I have a strategic and measurable training program? Do I have a playbook for recruiting and hiring? Am I ready and able to delegate and to give up control? That was a little challenging for Cody K. Did you say I'm that was it. challenging? We're still working on that. Don't be a fibber. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it's a uh, I feel like I could do it better. And the truth is you want to hire people that can do everything better than you. Uh, so be ready to delegate and give up control. And then what level of production and accountability will I expect? Cody K, you want to go over this one? I think go for it, honey. I'll chime in. I'll get the next yeah. one. So using models for your vision, when building out your vision, you want to make sure you have an organ, organizational chart and you want to make sure that you're kind of starting with the end in mind. And so when you're building a team, I'll give you an example. Sometimes people, their first hire will be an administrative person and they'll say, well, I'll give them a little salary, but I'll give them $250 per transaction. Well, that maybe works when you're doing 50 deals per year, but what happens to that compensation when you get to 400 deals per year? Um, then they're actually making more than you are as the business owner. So start with the end in mind. I always recommend going five years out and then doing each year going backwards. And then once you get to the beginning, do an end game org chart. Um, but start with at least five years out so that you can work that backwards and build your compensation plans around that for both administrative hires and for agents. So these What's are the some great, yeah, you're doing good on yes. this one. <laughs> so these, these are some great sources for us, indeed sponsored posts, indeed resume alerts. And by the way, on the resume alerts, create a resume alert with the keyword of your team. It might be nice to know if wow. someone on your team is looking for a new opportunity. <laughs> LinkedIn we have had sponsor a couple jobs. of these. A couple of those yeah. have come across. Yep. LinkedIn sponsor jobs. Also, we have uh, recruiting campaigns that we actually run through Sierra. 
where once someone gets uh, starts to take their classes, their information is put into our database and they go on to a campaign that I created that um, emails them and stays in front of them as they take those classes. Team member referrals, we do a revenue share model. So anytime someone brings someone onto the team, they actually get 1% of the revenue that comes to the company. Strategic partner referrals and agents and administrators you work with. Uh, we, uh, at the end of each transaction, we ask the agent and our administrator if the person that we worked with, either the agent or the admin, if they would be a good fit for our team. And if it comes back and I get a form that says that they would be, I just give them a call and let them know that, man, Cooney K raved about you. You said you're awesome. Would you be open to having a conversation and maybe sitting down so I can learn more about your goals and see if, if perhaps CRG can be a part of that? And you get a lot, honey. I mean, you've got a good amount of, like, well, it's dropped significantly <clears throat> recently with the changes in the marketplace, but you get a good chunk of candidates that are coming in, wouldn't you say, from those sources that you have on there and what you run the oh, campaign yeah. Sierra? Yeah, um, it just depends. Oh, on the Sierra campaign, on the Trek yeah. campaign? Yeah, it just depends. So when a lot of people are getting their license, uh, we, we basically take the information once per week and put that in our CRM. When the market was super hot, I would say maybe every week we got anywhere from 40 to 50 and now it's down to about uh, 10 to 20. So it's it's come down a lot with this new market we're in. So this is the first step in our process. When we identify someone that has a resume that looks like the 20% of a role that we're hiring for has uh, been accomplished by the candidate from looking at their resume, we have a screening call with them. Not and we. Is, Ricky won't let me do these. He does the screening call. There's no we here, honey. So it's a 30-minute call, and the ones that are highlighted are the ones that I always ask, and then the other ones are uh, just depending on the time that I have, because I usually have these back-to-back-to-back-to-back, -to -back -to -back -to -back, and I want to make sure I can answer a few questions for them. So these are the questions that are important to us, and you'll see on the additional questions, I do have a core value question. I used to say the core values and ask if they're in alignment with theirs, and pretty much everyone would say yes. And now I ask the question a little bit differently. I share the five core values, and I ask them to let me know how each one independently does or does not line up with their core values. And I get a lot more context from asking it that way. Then if uh, they have a good call with me, then we send them a natural personality assessment. We use the KPA, which is the Keller Personality Assessment provided by Keller Williams. And this assessment is based off the Burke assessment, which is arguably known as the most accurate personality assessment in the world. And the reason why this is so cool is after someone takes this assessment, I can tell with 99% accuracy what roles in real estate would give them energy and what roles in real estate would take it away, which is very important. It's my opinion that when you put someone in an environment where the tribe matches their vibe and you put someone in a role that's in alignment with their natural personality uh, style, that's where rocket fuel happens and success has a higher likelihood. Cody K, you want to talk about Shadow Day? Yeah, <clears throat> this uh, this gif is pretty funny here, honey. The uh, the shadow day. So when we started this. Do you recall what year? Like at what point in time? Long time ago. I don't, I don't recall what it was. The, this came as a byproduct of the problem that we would bring people in and we put them through a 30, 60, 90, which is a 90 day launch program. And we'd get, what do you say, honey, like three weeks in from someone. And the, the problem was their audio and their video just don't quite match up. I also believe we probably had had several people that they probably felt like, hey, what I thought I was getting into isn't quite what I need to be doing every day as far as us as a company. So we thought, well, what would it look like to actually bring people in and give them a taste of here's who we are and how we show up and what a day to day looks like. And then they could actually see I could get down doing this every day. This is in alignment with something that gives me energy and joy or they could exit themselves. 
So we created the shadow day. So Ricky has the initial screening call with people and the people that he would like to move forward within the process. We do the KPA and then we bring them in and they come in in the morning. You can see our schedules down at the bottom down here, but we do 8.30. One, it gives me a chance to see, do they arrive on time? Like my favorite people are those that stroll in at like 8.35 with Starbucks in hand. I love that. Uh, what does their schedule look like? How do they present themselves? The, we've got a uh, coaching. So we do from 8.30 to 8.45 where we've got scripting. I actively require them to participate. Participation's a big thing within our organization. So you can't stay quietly in the corner. That just doesn't work for us and how we require people to show up. So they get to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with us and in a group environment, we do a team huddle where everyone talks about their promises they're gonna make to themselves, what they're grateful for. Um, we have a quote of the day and then we pray out in the morning, faith being a part of our core value. It is a part of who we are and how we show up. It doesn't work for everyone. We give them a chance to see that. And then nine to 11, they're actually shadowing our different agents. So they'll hop around to different people so they can see Sierra, what it looks like, how we make our phone calls. And then we just throw them on the phones. Um, they have a script that goes out to them or a suggested, what's the word I need to use, honey? A suggested um, statement. <laughs> I can't remember what it's suggested called. Suggested conversation. Suggested conversation log. Yes, we have that, but we do give them the day before. But we put them on the phones. And so it gives us frontline experience of, are they nervous picking up the phone? Are they willing to just dial? Will they talk to anyone? How well are they willing to stay on the suggested language that we have on there? And then I can give them direct on-floor one-on-one coaching so I can get an idea of what they would be like within our environment. Then I pull them off and meet with them individually. That's when I do the bold card exercise. If I feel like there's someone that based on the time that we've had with them, I am interested in moving forward with them in the process. And then the team interviews them. So I step out of the room so that they're able to ask questions that maybe they wouldn't ask with me being around. And the team has you know, a care and candor interrogation with them, just learning more about who they are. Do they think that they can be a fit within the team culture? And then they can ask some questions for them that might they may be more curious about that they wouldn't be willing to ask me. And then we keep them for a skills lab, <clears throat> which we shut this up the last couple of weeks. I do a once a week skills lab training with my team. And so they sit in on that. So they've got a 60 minute immersion where I can just figure out, do they seem to flow with it? And more importantly for them, do they walk away and they actually feel energized and like it's something that they'd be willing to participate day in or day out? we let people know up front when they come in, you know, if at any point in time, this doesn't feel like your jam or you're just not interested, that's completely okay. I ask their same permission. May I get your permission if at any time, Ricky doesn't really like when I do that, but I do ask if at any point in time, I feel like this won't be a good fit for us with you. Can I let you know, like, why do I want to keep someone here for three hours if I don't feel like it's going to be a good fit? And we've had this, people will say they need to use the restroom and then they just leave. <laughs> we don't hear from them again. <laughs> that has occurred a handful of times, but it's a really great way to one, show people that you as a team and a company, your audio and your video match up. What I'm talking about when you read online is truly who we are. And then it gives people an opportunity to just truly get a day, the lay in the land. So you're not bringing people into the company, spending a lot of time with them. And then 30, 60, 90 days down the road, it's not like you move in with someone after you've been dating for a while. And you're like, oh, there's that thing about you. This gives us a chance to get in front of that. And we've gotten really great feedback, whether we've moved forward with people or not, that they just appreciate the full transparency with which this day gives. <clears throat> Anything I forgot there, honey? No, and and so we we sent out an email as well that gives them all the instructions for the shadow, and like Cody K says, has some suggested reading material um, to go over before they get here. And uh, the thing too, the only other thing I want to mention is if they get on the phone and they have conversations and they don't sound great, that's okay. What we're more looking for is their excitement to just jump in and do it and are they coachable once we give them coaching after that call and so i want that to be a big takeaway for people watching those are the two big things that we're looking for and outside of that the reason why i put this uh this gif in here i just i, I searched for a funny shadow gif and this came up and i just think it's hilarious so that's why that's there <laughs> 
So life story motivational interview. So this is another part of our process. Should they get past the shadow and the KPA stage? And a lot of this is formed around a um, training called career visioning that Keller Williams provides. It's a great way to take someone through the process. The only couple of things that we added to that career visioning process is the shadow day that we just went over. And then for administrators, we also go to a happy hour and get to know the significant other of the person that we're considering to join the team. But outside of that, we follow the career visioning model. And Life Story Motivational Interview is just that. So Life Story, is uh, each one is one hour. We do them in the same day. And Life Story, we're just going to go over all the things that have happened to them in the course of their life that has a, had a big impact on them and, most importantly, how they think. Then Motivational Interview, we go real deep on all the things that absolutely have to happen over the next five years for us as a direct result of working for Kane Realty Group for them to look at joining our team as one of the best things they've ever done in their life. For life story, what I'm really looking for is that are they open? Are they sharing? Have they learned from any mistakes uh, to them? What was very impactful? What wasn't? Things like that. That's what I'm looking for. On motivational interview, I'm looking for track record and I'm looking for trends. Are they just um, on, uh, sorry, on life story, I'm looking for track record and trends. So I'm looking when they talk about their professional growth, are they always making the same amount of money or have they made a lot of money and then it's come down? Really what I like to see is that they've made some money and they keep um, going up in their career and it keeps getting better and better. Motivational interview, really I'm looking to see, do we have an opportunity that's in alignment with where they want to go in five years? Is this person realistic or are they just putting out airy fairy things? Does this person even know what they want in their life over the next five years? Those are some of the things that we look at. Then should we move forward with a candidate? Um, after this, we do references and I'll get into that. But um, what Cody K does is we take their five-year goals and Cody K helps them put them into yearly goals the yearly goals into monthly goals, the monthly goals into weekly goals. So every week we're having conversations with these people about what it is that they said they want to achieve by the opportunity and working with us. And the life story part of it, <clears throat> to go back, babe. The life story, this one's huge, especially if the person that is bringing people, like Ricky's bringing people into the organization. He's the person that's having this type of conversation, and I'm the person that's directly leading them. So if you've got two different people that are doing this, the life story is really incredible because it truly does give you, and it's a really, it's an emotional, if you do this the right way and you really engage in vulnerability, you can pull some really deep scuba diving stuff out of people. Ricky keeps tissue in the office because he makes you don't make people cry, but most people do. A lot of people do cry in this process, which is great because it illustrates that they care. But if you are not getting this deep with people before you're bringing them in, how do you really understand who your people are? Because it's wonderful how people show up, right? They come and they present themselves and you think that you know who someone is. And yet understanding what events that have occurred and things that have gone on in their life that actually shape their perspective and their values really helps you to truly be able to lead people better. It's also a really great tool whenever I've got just, you know, friction that's going on, or I feel like I'm out of alignment with one of our agents, I can't go back to this. And, and notes that Ricky has put on here and things that they have talked through that really just help me understand, like, how do they process major events that go on in their life? How do they typically show up when something occurs? It's just a great story to understand your people. I don't know remembering who exactly said it, but no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And this is so different. And nobody does this in the hiring process that it truly just is illustrate a level of caring that speaks volumes to people. Yeah, we've actually had people that we didn't move forward with uh, reach out to us years afterwards, just thanking us for going through this process because it helped them somehow, some way. Um, so that's that's been pretty cool. And then this is these are our reference questions that we ask. Uh, the one question that I like a lot uh, that's my favorite question to ask is, uh, hey, Scott, what's a question that I haven't asked about Cody K that I should have asked that by getting the answer to that question would give me even more value as to the value she could bring to our company? 
And the reason why I have this on there is when I get called for a reference, I always hang up the phone thinking, wow, I'm surprised they didn't ask this about Cody K. They totally wouldn't have hired her if they knew <laughs> about this. And so that's why I asked that question, because that's where you're going to get the good stuff. And the other thing I'll point out on here is I always also ask, hey, who else do you know that has a different perspective about Cody K that I can get on the phone with today and going too deep, three deep, that's when you're going to get the really good references. The golden question is, what's the question for me? That you'd be like, why didn't someone ask me that about her? I think I need to, you need to tell me that later. If someone was calling, what'd be the question? You're like, why didn't they ask me that about Cody K? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got a few. Go on this one. All right. So, um, and so our pre-boarding meeting, uh, I referenced this early on. This is what we also go over when we go over that value. Um, we go over the value first and then we go over the compensation. So this one's for a buyer agent and you can see how that's broken down and it gives them just a picture and a clear understanding of, hey, here's how I do six figures my first year. Here's what I can expect maybe in year two or three. And here's here are all the other income opportunities I have. And the reason why we go over this and have a meeting about it is because we used to just send an, uh, our agreement that our attorneys came up with, and we would just send it through DocuSign. Well, then they would just have a whole bunch of questions, and it would require time to go through all of those. And so we just thought, well, let's be proactive instead of reactive. Let's actually meet with them and go over all of this, and then send out the documents for signing. And then these are just more incentive programs that we go over with them, a production incentive, second year program, um, sphere of influence listing program, and president's club. Um, and then this is where we meet with a significant other if it's uh, basically an administrative hire. We don't do that with agents. We used to, and that's not really scalable and so we typically do that just with the administrative team which is we call the success team uh they're the foundation of our company and so it's very important being that we're a smaller company to not let crazy in and so we are looking for what that dynamic what do you looks mean? like Did you say not let crazy in yeah so i think we're, we've got we're, a delay here we so we're looking. Go for it. So we're looking for, um, you know, how does the significant other treat the server? How do they treat each other? What does that energy dynamic look like? And we also want the significant other to be bought in on the opportunity for the candidate, just as much as the candidate is. That way, if they go home and have a really rough day, the significant other can say, "Why well, met Cody K?" And I don't think she would mean that the way you're taking it. <laughs> And so that's a reason why we go over that. And we find that's very helpful. Yes. And then expectations conversation, I'm toggling between the word that I choose to adjust this to for 2024, because I do <clears throat> redo this every year with agents that we have on here. Um, so the questions are a little bit different going in and I can share with anyone that's curious about them, what the revamped one for 2024 is going to look like. And the whole goal behind this is how do I get in front of conversations that we might need to have before we have them? It's completely different for me to talk with someone before we actually start their 30, 60, 90 about, hey, when you don't hit your numbers one week, can we go ahead and talk about how that conversation is going to be? Hey, if we've got a sensitive issue, like I don't feel like the way that you're coming in every day is presentable for clients, how would we want to talk about that? How do we talk about it for a day when you just got really crappy energy in front of the entire team and it's very obvious to everyone? How do people, how do I win with you? How do I lose? I mean, just really going through all of this because it really helps to set a, a safe space when you've got to talk about something in the future when we've already talked about how to do that. And so we go through all of this uh, at quarterly reviews. I'll pull this back out and I will ask questions. How, how did you, how did I win with you in this quarter? How did I lose with you? And then it gives me space to be able to share the same thing with them. But it's really just important. The expectations part of it, we've noodled around on this word because I think a, a lot of resistance comes from unmet, unmet expectations or your perception of what an expectation versus reality should be. And I highly encourage you have some type of dialogue where you can just sit down and really dive into 
a dedicated time to just understand what things mean to someone because accountability means something completely different to you than it might to somebody else. A sensitive issue. It's always really interesting to me. That's one of the questions on here that's asked, what's a sensitive issue to you? I get a, a rainbow of answers as to what's a sensitive issue to different people. And then again, when I feel like I just want to throat chop somebody because that happens and I know my people feel that way about me as well, I can go back to this document and remember something that we had talked about that helps bring clarity to a perhaps muddy conversation or a situation that we might be in together. Highly encourage you to do this and do it every year, right? Because it gives people an opportunity to change and to grow and to evolve as who they are. And it's funny, I'll pull it back out from the year before and people will look at their answers and they're like, yeah, that's not, that's not how I think or feel anymore. And so it's a great thing to do every single year. Yeah, and one thing too to take away from this, we don't just find out their expectations. Cody K shares her expectations with them as well. So they answer the same questions. Yes. Uh 90 day launch on here. We've got this. It's broke. This is the training program that we have. It is broken down into 30, 60, and 90 days. That gives me a good red light, green light all the way through. Primarily the 30 days is really focused around just understanding the recommended language that we have in the company, uh, memorization of things, the memorization of the strategy meeting, a slideshow, just truly getting, throw them into the water and let them learn how to swim is what the 30 days is. The 60 days primarily is broken down to, at the, they've green lighted out of their buyer strategy meeting or listing strategy meeting where they actually start obtaining clients. And so a big push in this is them to be able to take as many clients as they can, with the goal of them meeting a requirement 61 to 90, one person needs to go in escrow, which is when we allow our agents to go into new lead rotation before then they're just fishing in the ponds. And so we, this is all printed out for them. I go over it week over week. We sit down, we talk about where you are in relation to where you need to be as far as this. Um, and then the expectations conversation, I've got questions already geared around this so that this is a really seamless conversation to have. The next slide over, once they get out of their 30, 60, 90, these are two of the primary tools that I use to hold them accountable to the goals that they say that they want. The GPS, I mean, it's like you go in your car and you plug this in, it tells you where to go. This is how they're driving out, how they choose to do their business. I ask them really intentionally to have one column that's focused on business and the other two that pertain to whether it's personal goals, health goals, financial goals, relationship goals. It's really great that I'm having people that can sell real estate, make a lot of money. And if I can have people become better humans through their experience of working with us, that is what actually gets me fired up. And so I do ask them to consider two other arenas of life. And then the 411 is just how you actually break down what you're doing yearly, monthly, and weekly based on the GPS. <clears throat> Vision board. So, so this, uh, yeah, so um, this year we did, or actually last year was the first year to do it, and we did it again this year. Instead of, some people still have their individual vision boards that they keep by their desk, and this year... Uh, and last year we did a team vision board, which is really cool. So that way everyone can see front and center what everyone's working for. And then at the end of every quarter, we go through and we um, X off the things that we were able to accomplish. Um, then it, there's some really cool conversations around, around that and going over, well, is this still something you intend to go after this year? Are you moving it to the third quarter or is this not important to you anymore? Why didn't you? Um, hit that goal and so forth, which um, some really great conversations always come from that. And then you also want to keep your people growing. Um, we use a growth calendar. It's um, a 12 month calendar for books, relationships, seminars, basically just things you plan out ahead of time to ensure that you're continuing to grow. We also have a monthly book club. We call it grow club now. And so um we uh, we have books for the theme of the year, so we already have quite a bit already planned out for uh, 2024 as an example, and we always have one book per quarter that's open for us to kind of meet the moment in terms of what's happening with our team or with the industry and, and so forth, because we all know your business will only grow to the extent that you do. 
We also have monthly awards that we do for our team members. Um, here are just a few of them. And with the awards, we post them on social media. And then we also give them something called Cane Keys, which is part of something we have called Cane Club, which is basically an online store for them to, um, to cash in those Cane Keys for a variety of things, Amazon gift cards, vacations, massages, car details. There's hundreds of things on there and it's a really cool program. One of the awards we also do is the Culture Keeper. And the Culture Keeper, basically the every, every week, agents and admin fill out these Culture Keeper forms and whoever gets the most amount of culture keeper votes, they wind up getting a parking space in the front of the building. And then they get additional cane keys because culture is the most important thing for us. Obviously, production is very important and so is culture. And so on the form, you can see it, it asks who is the person you're nominating and sending this note to, and then what core value specifically did they exemplify and what did they do to demonstrate that core value? Then you wanna keep just recruiting, recruit, recruit, recruit. You wanna have a bench. Um, you also, the reasons why you wanna keep recruiting is when you don't have a bench, your standards can be held hostage. If you know you've only got two agents as an example, but you have all these leads and you're not able to serve them, well, you're probably gonna keep on to somebody or hold someone on the team that's not hitting standard because you don't have anyone else. And then you're worried that maybe then you'll get that job. And so you always wanna be recruiting so that you have a bench of people to come in and replace that person in the event that someone is not meeting standard or a cultural fit. Now, you also want to be recruiting because if you have great, great people, they're going to want bigger opportunities. And so you need to be recruiting so that someone can take their role so that then that person that's a superstar can move into a different role. And then, of course, top grading, which is kind of you know what I mentioned in the beginning. The people that have taken you here may not be the people that are going to take you here. And what we've learned is the people that are here might not want to go here. It could stress them out to be a part of something up here. And so you always want to be recruiting. Want to go over some of these mistakes, Vic? Well, yeah, we have so many. We have so many that we have, and they just couldn't all fit on here. But yes, yeah, so a poor value mismatch. Um, hiring for the position, <clears throat> then hiring out of a like need it's a big problem. You've got like a problem that you need to do where you're hiring quick. Normally hasn't resulted in anything positive for us. If it's worked for you, let me know how it works. Accountability, this matters. You know, you've got to be able to uh, have it and, main and maintain it. And like Ricky was saying, when you're not constantly recruiting and having people that you're bringing into the organization, this gets real loose, real fast. Um, track record, self-motivated, profit first. Yeah, I mean... We made a lot of mistakes that come in here. I think expectations is a great way to get in front of a lot of them. And then just having a system for the way that you recruit and bring people on. And when I think of this too, I just think, no, they haven't been, this is us in the past. I know they haven't been successful in the past, but they're so yeah. great. And they just haven't been in a company like ours yet. Oh man. And then also yeah. Your job's not to motivate your team members. If you think that, that's not it. Your job is to find motivated people and help them direct that motivation to help them focus on the activities that will then help them have a big life. Yes. Oh, you like this one. And we got like one yeah. minute, honey, and then we need to go into questions. Yep. So I'm going to go through this fast, but um, here are Gary's 12 people mistakes that CEO makes, uh, that CEOs make. Um, we already kind of covered always be recruiting, so not looking for talent, not hiring killers, people that are assertive and that want to get after it, that are self-motivated, um, hiring people that need to change, waiting for a replacement before replacing, failing to help people grow, buying into uh, say versus do, failing to inspect what you expect. Well, it's pretty neat. A lot of these are in our presentations. I thought that was quite cool because this came out after. Not letting goals be the bad guy. I love that. Let the goals do the heavy lifting. Propping people up. Failing to listen our way to success. Running on personality gas instead of organizational gas. That's huge. 
and leading from me go instead of we go. Yeah. And then here's some books that we really <laughs> love as well. Um, these are some of the team favorites that are all applicable with some of what we have been sharing. Um, for me, the all other, of these- The only other book, honey, that's not on there that I do recommend for people, we do the Fanatical Prospecting. No, that's not on here. Fanatical Prospecting is a book that's within the 30, 60, 90. It's the first 30 days that we do require someone to do that reading because if they do read that book and I'm able to ask questions about the book throughout their weekly meetings in that first 30 days and the book just feels exhausting or daunting to them, we probably shouldn't be going past the next 30 days because a lot of what is in that book is just what you do in an eat what you kill industry. So that would be a book I highly recommend you reading one if you haven't, and then two, having people read within their first 30 days. Yeah, these would be the books that we recommend for um, um, for people starting a team and people with a team. And the two books that we always recommend, like Cody K said, Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blount. He also has a book called Objections. And then also the book Mindset by Carol Dwick. I think that one's a very good read. So well, Eleanor said, for to be our, real. Yeah, go for it, honey. Yep. yep. For our own success to be real, it must contribute to the success of others. And I truly believe that. So um, we want to take questions now. And I want to make sure that I share this because I said that I would. Here's all of our contact information. Those are our cell phone numbers. Those are our emails. And then if you go to canerealtygroup.com forward slash agent insider, that will allow you to enter your information, become a part of our referral network and directory. We send out a lot of referrals as well as get on our agent insider newsletter, which we take a lot of time to produce every month to provide value, to uh, share failures, wins, what's working, what's not, and so forth. So we'd love to connect with you at a deeper level, and we're excited to take your questions. Awesome. Well, what an amazing presentation. That's the second time through for me, and I picked up a whole bunch more key points the first, the second time going through than the first time when we were out in Denver together. Um, so quick, quick context. I think Jill was asking, how many agents do you guys currently have? Currently, right now, we have nine. We had three that um, um, we, that was the best thing for them to go to a different industry. Uh, they didn't make it out of our 90 day training. Actually, we've had four actually we lost this year. We also lost another one. Um, and it's honestly, y'all, it's when I look at those five core values, I can attribute not hiring someone or getting out of partnership with someone to every single core value. And the majority of the one, the two that come up the most are passion, which is not having a big why uh, or not having a deep connection to it. So a lack of passion and then growth. It's easy to be comfortable. We have a saying on our team, get comfortable being uncomfortable because for you to have the big life that you don't currently have and the income you don't currently have, as great as we are, as great as real estate can be, if you become or stay the same version of yourself that you are today, tomorrow you'll have the same thing. So those are the two core values that tend to come up a lot. And so to answer the question, it's nine. Okay. And then like, do you guys have a target? Like, are you, feel, do you feel that like there's a certain size to the business that's right? Or really, is it just dictated by the business and the lead flows and um, the right people who come into your life? It's based off the organizational chart, to be honest, because we have everything already planned out and we plan that out based on um, what we want for the business and then we and what we want for profit and based on that is determines our agent count we have this beautiful new building just south of downtown austin and uh, it fits 30 people and so right now that's kind of the number we want to fill this beautiful building up and then kind of see where things go from there but to answer the question it's based off the business plan the or the business plan dictates the org chart and we have had a lot of conversation that Ricky and I have <clears throat> had over the years and how big can we grow the business and the agent count where we're not compromising culture in the process. And I'm not sure we've figured out what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't really know. I do know it's important that we're creating an environment where people in our presence don't feel like a number that matters to us. 
Um, but we have had that conversation. How big, how big can we grow where we're not compromising culture in the process? We haven't hit that ceiling at this point. And so you'll have to get back to us on that one. Fair enough. So then what does your admin team look like? What is your structure of your admin team today? So we, um, so our success team makes up of administrative assistants and client experience managers. And so we wanted to create a model where our administrators did not have a cap on their income. And we wanted to get away from the transaction coordinator, listing coordinator model, because in the past when we had that model, when one of them wanted to go on vacation, the other one didn't know the other one's job as well. And so they, it was just hard to finagle. And honestly, a lot of the time it came back to me and Cody K, the job did. And so the model we came up with through coaching with Gary was the model where we have administrative assistants that do a lot of the keyboard behind the scenes stuff. And then the client experience manager, they're the ones having a lot of conversations with the clients in the listing and transaction process. Uh, they're the ones taking care of the higher level activities and the admin team basically are working for them in the background. And really their number one measurable is, are we getting a referral from 50% of the clients we're serving? And are we getting a five-star review from 80% of the clients um, that we're serving? And so um, the uncapped income part of it is we have something called our CRG promise and the CRG promise is basically a promise to deliver a five-star experience, one in which will excite you to review us and refer us. When a referral comes in to either the agent or the client experience manager, the agent gets another client and the client experience manager actually get a, gets a part of that commission. So they have uncapped income potential through that model and the administrative assistants support them enough for them to really attack that. So then... Another question came in here from Cindy. It's um, how do you keep your team accountable um, and through, you know, through using Sierra or or otherwise? Um, so I know you you threw up metrics before and there was a really guiding principle. I think it was on Gary Keller's slides about you let the goals be the heavy lifting, right? Let them do that heavy work. So how do you guys do that? Cody, can you want to talk about the filter, the filter check daily? Yeah, so, I mean, Sierra and Sisu don't lie, so it makes it makes the conver that is the conversation. So it's really simple. So yes, we have the filters that we've got. We went in and decided different filters that we believe are important for us to protect the profit, protect the pipeline. That agents have got to clear out every single day. Our virtual professional go in at five o'clock in the afternoon and they look at everyone's pipeline and then they do a blast out to the sales team that says these people are eligible for lead rotation the next day. These people are not eligible for it. I'm able to use it. Uh, we post numbers at the end of noon every day so we can see during our glory hours, you know, how did you warrior up between nine and noon? Those numbers are posted from the dialer dashboard every single day. And then obviously I'm using both of those in 411s each week where I'm coaching them to their goal because what they wrote down and here's exactly what you did. We've got the call recording. So that's a phenomenal way to review game tape where I'm actually able to do macro adjustments within their skill set to be able to communicate with people differently. And then Sisu, I mean, it's just, dashboards right there. So it keeps me in alignment with what they did, what they've got coming up, what their financial goals are. I mean, it's the foundation of the conversation that I'm having week over week. Yeah. So a couple of things I just want to highlight there. So number one, you guys are using Sierra. It's it's basically connected with a direct API to CSU. So you're using your dashboard that's showing your calls, your appointments set, your appointment mets. So you're able to monitor all that through the through that tracking, right? Um, yes. Second, second of all, um, I think you touched on this, is that um, in Sierra, as part of the dialer, um, it records the phone calls. And depending on what state you're in, sometimes you have to disclose that these calls are being recorded for training purposes and stuff like that. Um, but the point of this is that you can then use this to your point for coaching and script practice and like, hey, this yeah. is an objection handler that you could have used in this scenario, right? Uh, so you're leveraging the, the dialer function there within Sierra. So that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know where we would be without that. I mean, it's it's like reviewing your game tape. It's really critical. I spend a lot of time listening to calls because you can't hide behind 
you can't hide behind it. And so it allows me to be able to really get in front of skill set developmental opportunities as as well as whatever I'm rolling out from skills labs. I can see how it's actually being applied on the field with yeah. the leads have coming in. I love that. I love that. Um, we use Gong, which is very similar, and it's uh, it's 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 powerful. Um, all right, a couple of housekeeping things. There's a couple of people asking. One, can we get a copy of the presentation? Um, and the answer is yes, right? If they email you guys, you can get a copy of the presentation. And then also, there was a Jill actually asked the question, can we get a copy of the handout? So I don't know what specific handouts Jill was looking for, but um, perhaps if, um, if she wants to email you guys what handouts in particular that she was looking for, you guys would be happy to share. So yeah, 100%. Awesome. The majority, a vast majority of everything we use is something someone shared with us, at least from a foundational aspect. And I don't believe that we'd be where we are today without the help of others. So it'd be our pleasure yeah. to share anything that anyone wants um, within this presentation. Yes, 100%. Well, I, ask then, I want your cane awards. I want the uh, copy of your cane awards uh things that you can get with the car wash, the this, that. I, I love that idea. So um, I think I might even have to adopt that here on my sales team. So I love that. So I would like a copy of that. So yeah, Absolutely. And anyone that has an interest ever in coming down, spending time with us, our home is open to people sincerely. Like, I mean that we're welcome to have you come in and shadow the team, spend some time with us. So we're here. Yeah, we we often have people across the country come down and spend time with us and we love it. It sharpens our axe and it allows us to give back. So, hey, just real quick, I know you guys had it in the presentation, but can you drop your email address into the chat real quick? Because a couple of folks, I guess, didn't copy it down um, during when it was on screen. So if you guys could do that, that'd be wonderful. Um, and then, hey, per personally, this is really just more of a personal question while we do that, is um, in your lead ponds, um, they, do you have a certain number of leads that you allow your agents to work at one time or can they just go fishing unlimited in the number of leads they work? A subject we are constantly having conversation about. Uh, oh, I see. So I caught, I, that's why there was the pause. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are constantly having, having conversations about that. Where we currently have it, I do believe um, our, our agents don't have a specific cap. I don't allow, they don't have more than 2000 honey, I think is where we've got it, um, where they have at one time, but it has definitely been a conversation that we've had in having some type of cap or putting people in because I do believe by not having that, <clears throat> you just don't maximize every opportunity because there's always another one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. and GGMS really does help. It does. It makes it real. Yes. Well, it helps us navigate a larger pipeline um, and what that number should be and what it's going to be moving forward. We haven't quite figured that, that out. If I were to guess, it's probably going to be a get down to a thousand and then the rest will go to ponds. That's gotcha. what I believe too. Yeah, makes sense. Hey, one last question. Um, Rich just asked, what are your biggest sources for finding agents interview? I think you guys touched on this a little bit during the presentation. It was the LinkedIn, the Indeed, and things, the real estate schools. But if you just want to summarize that real quick. Yeah, um, I would say by far for us in our market, Indeed is the biggest one. Um, we also get a lot of website submissions. And we could probably do a better, a better job of asking exactly how they found us. A majority of them just say Google. They're just Googling real estate teams. Um, but I would say a vast majority of them are, uh, are for sure from Indeed, either a sponsored ad or a resume alert, where then we saw something that we liked based on the keywords we're searching for. And we reached out to them and set up a phone call. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, again, I cannot thank you guys enough for this amazing content. And I, you know, I can just see the years and years of learning curve and trials and errors in making a bad hire and not having a process and how you guys have just, you know, personally gone through this. And so this blueprint that you went through today, um, you know, are, are truly a shortcut, probably taking 10 years, seven years off of someone's journey 
that is trying to scale up a team like this, which is which is phenomenal. So I'll tell you this. Um, I'll, really, each slide could be a thirty minute conversation. This is just the fast and furious foundational uh, setup. Um, we've we've learned a lot, and my recommendation is always to fail fast. Fail as fast as you can because. I'll leave you with this. Gary, most often when we're spending time with him and a few other agents, he'll be in the front of the room and he will say, the only reason why I'm in this chair and I'm speaking to you is because I've made more mistakes than you have. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. Go and take action. Just make sure you have a foundation for it. And I will piggyback off that real quick. It'll just take me two seconds, but I do believe in that expectations conversation. That's what's really important. I kind of like parenting where, and maybe I'm alone in this, I could be, but where you want your kids to think that everything's perfect because you want them to think mom and dad have all their shit together. It can be like that when running a team too, right? You can go, gosh, I just want them to think I got it all figured out and I got it all together. And yet people are actually really attracted to vulnerability and failure. And so if you navigate that expectations conversation the right way and tell them, I'm going to screw up. I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to make you mad. You're not going to like me some days. Here's how we get through that. You actually can retain people longer. That's great. That was a great closing, great closing advice. So uh, awesome. Well, all right. Thank you all so much. Thank, we appreciate yeah, y'all. Thank you all for having us. Appreciate have it. Have a blessed day. You too, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.